from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, dear listeners, and welcome to another Ropecast. And I'm here, well, sort of still with Jenny from Massachusetts, former colleague of Roger's, and uh, I listened in on the previous podcasts, and uh, that was so much fun to listen to, so I asked Jenny to stick around for another episode, so thank you again for doing that, Jenny. Oh, this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this. I'm glad you are enjoying it. The reason why I wanted you to stick around was I wanted to discuss uh, a certain aspect of American culture with you. Here's the thing. When I was in the United States last time, um, people kept asking me, what's the difference between Germany and the U.S.? And so after a while, I thought, you know, I can't talk about cars and Autobahn and all that kind of stuff all the time. I need to have some more profound response to that. And I thought about it a little. And I started saying at one point, I think you guys are an inside nation. Let me explain. Um, I have a sort of a feeling that Americans tend to do everything inside some kind of enclosed, well-defined space. You don't have open woods. You have parks. You even have a park ranger telling you to keep on that track. If you have a porch, you have a sort of a fence around it very often. Uh, Americans invented malls. You don't go strolling around a city looking for shops, you go inside a mall that has, I don't know, six, seven entrances, but you're enclosed all the time. If you're walking in the street, um, chances are somebody will stop and say, Is your, has your car broken down? And if, if it's not a private person, then the p- police may pick you up and think you're doing something wrong. Is that a, something that sort of rings a bell with you, or do you think I'm nuts? I think that tells me a little bit about where you lived in the United States. Uh-huh. I think that if you are on the East Coast in a, in a town or a city or even a really small town, you do get that sense of, of parameters, of, of sidewalks. But once you move beyond that, you get further west, not even west of the Missis- Mississippi, but a little bit further west, things open up a lot more. If you're in Colorado or Kansas or... Nebraska, or even Missouri, I think that you don't have that same sense. For example, in the towns, there might not be sidewalks. They're just, Mm -hmm. first of all, we're not expected to walk along the side of the road because we the distances are so far that we have to drive everywhere. If we're walking along the road, someone might ask, did your car break down? You wouldn't think someone just walking would be out for a walk. Why do we have malls? I don't know. Malls are, are passe. They're going away now because everybody's done their shopping online. Malls are, are closing up. They're getting tumbleweeds inside of them. <laughs> God. A little bit like uh, cities in Germany. Are, are we a society that has to live within closed spaces? I, I thought, you know, one thing that really struck me was... For example, this this idea of, of having all these national parks, and then you have, and well-defined lookout points on the side of the road, whereas I, as a European or German, say, there's you know a little path leading into the woods. Why don't I just drive into there and take a little stroll? And I always had the feeling. That's something you wouldn't want me to do if I were in the states. You're supposed to wait for that lookout point. Wait for that park, wait for that space where I was supposed to be. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think a uh-huh. lot of people like to go off the beaten path and do their exploring, and that's what we would expect. I think it has to be a little bit more of an insider thing, that you know where the paths are to, to, to go for walks, that you need to know where the mm-hmm. the beaches are that the people don't go to all the time. But I certainly don't get that feeling uh, as an American, that I have to stay within certain boundaries, that there are places that I need to be. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Uh huh. So you don't have that feeling. Not not at all. So let me ask you 
the other way around. What would you say if somebody asked you? Well, I'm pretty sure you got asked that question. What is the difference, the difference between, you know, living here in Germany, where you've lived quite a while, I don't know how many years, and About living... eight in total. So what's the difference between living here and living back in your home country? Compared to Asia, it doesn't seem like there are that many differences, but there are. In, in fact, exactly what you talked about earlier, I think that in Germany there are a lot more, a lot more boundaries that people have have walls that protect their 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 yard from the sidewalk so that people can't see in. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the United States, I think a lot of people have really big lawns that are open. There's no fence mm -hmm. around that. Mm -hmm. So anyone can see. And I think that we are a really open society. We leave, we leave the doors open inside of our house. And in Germany, I remember people closed the doors when I was here in Zarbrücken and I had an office. I always left my office door open, whereas my colleagues kept their office doors closed. And that meant that my office became the closet where all the students dropped off their coats. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a little bit different. Uh -huh. mm. I think a really big difference is public transportation. In, uh -huh. in Germany, there's really good public transportation in the United States because our distances are so far that there's not good public transportation. The buses are few and far between. There, there are a lot of places that are not covered by bus routes. At least in Boston, the the uh, subway line is a disaster. It's I, from I would the, have thought at least it's Boston, the 19th which century. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I would have thought that you know, uh, even especially with uh, with the environmental problems that. Uh, at least a modern city like like Boston would realize that there may be a little bit to do here. Well, they know that it needs to change, but then there's also the budget. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's just a um, sense of embarrassment to everyone in the city. Mm -hmm. We all joke about it. It's one of those things that unites us. Well, if you want to get someplace in a hurry, don't drive. Take the T, that's the subway system, but you'll get there a little bit quicker maybe than driving, but not much quicker, not compared to Germany, where the public transportation is really, really excellent. Hmm. Glad to hear that. Well, thanks, Jenny, for having this little talk about cultural differences with me. Um, maybe we can agree at least to disagree, of course, on certain things, but also it's interesting that, you know, from different perspectives you see, well, different differences. That's right. We can agree to disagree. <laughs> right. Okay. So thank you. Have a good trip back thank to Massachusetts you. and hope you're coming back. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.